Welcome to Discover the Showboat, a city at sea, a collection of video tours presented by Battleship Volunteers. Battleship North Carolina, an extraordinary ship that steamed into history. In these videos, enjoy the compartments, equipment, documents, and photographs, and hear the stories that celebrate the young men who proudly served on the most highly decorated American battleship of World War II, their home. Hi, my name is Cecil Lard and I'm a volunteer here aboard the USS North Carolina. I'm sitting in the ship's vegetable locker where six to ten young men worked every day starting late in the afternoon to early in the evening until they finished prepping vegetables and fruit for the next day's meals. Very large quantities were required to feed the over 2,000 man crew three meals a day. These veggies and fruits were brought up from the over 100,000 pound storage space down in cold storage. As you can see on your screen, as we mentioned the large amounts needed to feed the crew, they processed in May of 1943 for the month, 62 pounds of cabbage, 125 pounds of carrots, 269 pounds of celery, 366 pounds of onions, 466 pounds of lettuce, 2,656 pounds of potatoes, for a total of 3,944 pounds processed or 127 pounds of vegetables a day, fresh. Canned vegetables totaled they processed 2,627 pounds or another 85 pounds per day. That's a total of 212 pounds of fresh and canned vegetables each, vegetables each day. They also processed fresh fruits in the space. The month of May 1943, they processed 865 pounds of apples, 777 pounds of grapefruit, 540 pounds of lemon, 1,668 pounds of oranges, 85 pounds of avocados for a grand total of 3,935 pounds or 127 pounds a day of fresh fruit. Canned fruit total was 1,151 pounds or 37 pounds a day. That gives them a grand total of 164 pounds of fresh and canned fruits per day. Total combined production of fresh and canned fruit and vegetables 375 pounds per day. In order to process such large quantities of vegetables in such a short time, the guys relied on this vegetable processing slicing machine. The way it works is this housing opens up and one of these blades was placed into the housing. Different blades did different things. This one would slice french fries, this one would dice, this one would grate, and this one would slice. They also had a couple of other versions that could do a few other things. So we're standing across the passageway in the second vegetable prep area that primarily dealt with canned goods and potatoes. Potatoes were peeled in uh, vegetable paring machines that we commonly call potato peelers. The way they work is there's a motor underneath, there's a platform in here that's kind of wavy, and the inside of this thing is very, very rough. Potatoes were poured in the hole in the top, water was turned on here, water ran in, you ran it 30 to 45 seconds, any longer, and you would make marbles. They also called them marble makers and you would get in big trouble. You'd lose all your potatoes. But you could also swing this open to kind of see how things worked. And once the potatoes were done though, you would actually swing this open, pull this up, potatoes and water would run out here, the water runs out, you have potatoes, they go in the big bucket and you're done. So. The reason I'm in here interpreting this space and what sort of drew my interest to it is I started volunteering in 2012, July I think it was. And one of my early projects was working on the countertops around because stainless, the lower grade stainless will turn green from chloride ions. And figured out how to clean them up and I was polishing and cleaning them around, making them look a little better. And every time I passed this space, I looked in and it just kind of called to me, hey, you know, there's potential in here. Um, you should come in here and, and do some work. So I went and talked to Kim and Mary Ames and 
got the okay and came in and basically the machine had multiple pounds of paint on it, which I got off and repainted and made it look a little bit better. It's a little dirty right now, I gotta clean it up. And this pelican head looked a lot like this one we just found. It's just not good. So I cleaned it up, came in here one day and I opened it up and there's a grater in it. So this is the grater. So it's covered in cosmoline, everything's covered in cosmoline. Cosmoline is just the stickiest, nastiest thing you've ever dealt with in your life. It's kind of hard to describe, but it's petroleum based and they coat everything metal with it and it preserves it. So when you clean it off, it looks like this. This thing's over 75, 80 years old and it looks like it did, but it had little chips in it. I'm thinking, wow, somebody's been chipping wood in this thing. What the heck have they been doing? And so I took it off, took it to the sink and started trying to clean it up. All of a sudden my eyes start burning and sneezing and I can't figure out what in the world's going on and then I realize those aren't wood chips, those were cosmoline onions, they were grated onions. So apparently the last time it was used, they grated onions in it, nobody cleaned it, they came back cosmoline to onions and all. So I got attacked by 75 plus year old dehydrated onion chips. That was a lot of fun. but. This is kind of what it turned out to be and with a lot of help from some other volunteers and Mary Ames and Kim and the other folks and kind of impressed. These were all Cosmoline too though. These were, these were a major labor of love. So that's it. Thank you for watching Discover the Showboat, a collection of videos from the Battleship North Carolina in Wilmington, North Carolina. Visit us online at www.battleshipnc.com. The showboat welcomes visitors daily. In 2020, the Battleship North Carolina received an NC Cares Humanities Relief Grant from the North Carolina Humanities Council, www.nchumanities.org. Funding for NC Cares has been provided by the National Endowment for the Humanities, as part of the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act Economic Stabilization Plan.